I don't think I've ever been this excited about the generative AI image space, and it's all because of Flux. And especially today, because on Pixel Dojo, I just launched a one-click Flux image trainer that allows you to create a Laura of a person, style, place, object, whatever you want with one click. Let's jump in and take a look. And man, people are going crazy with this stuff. I have over 10 gigabytes, yes, gigabytes of images being generated on Pixel Dojo per day. You can check out the public gallery here and see some of those amazing works of art. And Flux is really just taking it to an entirely new level. Once you're subscribed to Pixel Dojo, you get unlimited AI art generations, unlimited Flux creations, everything. It's all built in. Now this includes Flux Pro, Flux Schnell, Flux Dev, everything is built in. So what you do is you jump on over and you'll see this menu on the left hand side. This has all the different tools. You can see here there are over 20 different AI image generation tools that have built into this thing and I continue to expand and refine all the time. You can see right here at the top under create is the flux image creator. This is where you come in and you can generate all of your different flux images. You can select from flux realism, Schnell pro, and even Laura's. I've got a few baked in Laura's that are already in here. You can also add a custom Laura from a URL. You just drop the URL to civet AI or hugging face, whatever it might be, drop it right in here and you can start generating images using any Laura that you want. But, that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're gonna jump down to this training tab and you'll see two different buttons. You'll see Flux Style Trainer and an SDXL Style Trainer. Now, the XDXL version is the older version that allowed you to create Allura using, as it states, the SDXL model, but Flux, this is brand new. And when you jump into the Flux Style Trainer, it is dead simple. You only need one thing. You need to upload a zip file that contains about 10 to 20 images of whatever character you're trying to train it against. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and just select 20 images of myself. I'm gonna zip those up. And now ideally this trains at 1024 by 1024. So you wanna have images that are at least that big. It does work with smaller images, but ideally you have higher resolution images that are above 1024 by 1024. You don't have to worry about cropping. That all happens on the back end. I'm gonna auto crop all of your images. I'm gonna even use face detection where appropriate. The other cool thing is I already automatically do captioning on the back end too. I do WD14, which means that you're gonna get all of these amazing captions. It's gonna analyze every single one of the images and pair those captions with it for the training. So really all you have to do is select your file add a unique identifier. So this is something that's unique that's gonna be used to actually produce an image once you're done with this Laura and you're trying to create images. So in this case, you can go with talk. I'm gonna go with B love. So Brian Lovett is my name. So I go with B love, but just choose something unique that you're gonna remember. And then prefix for the image captions. So I already told you it's gonna automatically caption every single one of your images but you can go ahead and add something here. So you can say a photo of B-Love man, and then a comma. Every single one of the captions is gonna have that at the front of it. So you can use this when you're generating images and it's just gonna know exactly what you're trying to create. And then from here, all you have to do is click on start training. You can see it's uploading and analyzing the images. It takes just a few seconds and then it's gonna start the actual process of training your Laura. Don't close the window. It takes about 20 minutes to complete. This is crazy. It is running on an NVIDIA H180 gigabyte of VRAM GPU. It's a monster data center machine, and that's what's training every single one of these LoRa's. Now, you've seen some places offer different trainings for Flux LoRa's. Oftentimes, they are training those on top of Flux Schnell. This is actually being trained on the much larger Flux dev model. So you're gonna get really awesome quality out of this. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna do the exact same training, but with SDXL, we're gonna be able to compare these side by side and you're gonna be able to see the difference in quality that you get right out of the box using Flux. So let's go ahead and start that training. We'll use the same training images, the same token, and the same caption prefix. All right, and we're already looking good. Training completed successfully. That it actually took a lot less time than I expected. So you'll see a couple buttons here. You can download and save your safe tensor file directly to your computer if you want to. 
you can copy the URL to it or you can open it up in my custom styles, which I'll show you in a little bit. But the main thing that you wanna do is use Influx Image Creator, just click on this button. It's gonna take you back to the Flux Image Creator. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you're gonna see my custom styles. This is really cool because you can organize all of those custom styles. If you have something from Civit AI or Hugging Face or wherever else, or something that you trained on Pixel Dojo, it's gonna show up here and it makes your life a lot easier and I'll show you why. So we have this unnamed lore that we just created. You can see B-Love is the token, the caption, a photo of B-Love man and the type is a person. Exactly what we set up. Now if you click on this, what it does is it automatically selects Flux Laura as a model. This is Flux Dev. It selects the custom Laura URL and automatically pastes in your safe tensor file. Not only that though, it automatically adds a photo of B-Love Man directly to the prompt box. So you're literally all set to go straight away. So now you can just click generate and you can generate your first image with this. Here's the first image that comes back and you can see it's actually pretty decent quality. It looks like me. I don't know why I'm wearing a hat and glasses, but hey, whatever works. Let's tweak the prompt a little bit. I'll say a photo of B-Love Man sitting in a cafe in Lisbon wearing a jetpack. Kind of pretty specific there, I think. And here I am sitting in a cafe in Lisbon. You can actually see some of that old architecture out there. Now, I'm not wearing a jetpack. I don't know what this is. It looks like uh, almost like a gas line maybe with a valve on it. Really interesting though. Uh, not quite what I was expecting, but you can see the lighting, the detail, the skin textures, everything else really spot on from this model. It's pretty impressive. And you can just go ahead and play around with it. So you can go ahead and select different aspect ratios. So if we wanna do an Instagram portrait style in that four to five aspect ratio, you also have some advanced options. You can drop down, you can change the number of steps, although I think 28 is pretty high quality from what I've seen out of this model. You can also change the guidance scale and you have full control over the seed. And man, I really love the quality that's coming back from these. Now, there are a couple of options you have here. You can download this image directly to your computer. You can just save it right here. You can click on save, which this saves it to my images, which I'll show you here in a second. Or you can go save and upscale. If you go save and upscale, it's gonna save it to my images and then it's gonna automatically load it into the creative upscaler where you can go in here, you can select a different art style. So we could say photorealistic. You can check out all these different advanced options where you can set the upscale amount, how much it should resemble the original, the creativity. So how many extra new details it's going to add, all of those sorts of things. I also have a fix hands option built right in. This doesn't so much apply to Flux though. Flux does a pretty good job of having high quality hands. So we'll go ahead and just click on the upscale button. And in just a few seconds, we're gonna have this double resolution version of the image with a few things just cleaned up. And here you can see that before and after, you can take a look at the higher resolution version of the image right here, and then you can make any additional adjustments you want. Now that's just one of the tools obviously that you can use here. You can also do things like in painting, magic lighting. All right, so now it looks like our SDXL model has also finished training. So let's go ahead and click on that. Again, we're gonna load the exact same settings. We're gonna select a three to two aspect ratio. Click on generate. One of the other things you'll notice here is you've got this enhance with AI button. You have that on both the flux image generator and on the SDXL image generator. What this does is use a large language model that's fine tuned on good high quality prompts and it's gonna go ahead and add different keywords that describe the scenery or the lighting or whatever else. So you can just start with a basic prompt and then you can use those to just sort of up level everything. It makes it a little bit easier. All right, and here's the first image out of Flux. All right, I don't know why it made me shirtless, but hey, I'm pretty jacked, that's good. Uh, I've got two cameras, cause you know, how many cameras do you actually need? At least two to take selfies evidently. But if you look at the lighting, the quality, everything else, pretty spot on. Let's take a look at the SDXL version and ooh, um, so this one would have to go through a face enhancer for sure. It looks like, I don't know, the face is sort of stretched out a little bit. Not quite loving that. Now, one of the things you can do is send this straight to my face enhance tool because honestly for SDXL, you're gonna need it. But let's try something a little bit 
more advanced here, we're gonna drop in a custom prompt that says, a photo portrait of beloved Superman looking at viewer wearing high-end thick white fashion sunglasses, clear frames and yellow tint lenses wearing futuristic headphones. Pretty specific. And we'll go ahead and drop that into both of the image generators and see what comes back from those. That's really good out of flux. It added the sunglasses and everything looks natural. The eyes, it's got all the wrinkles in my forehead, everything. It's really, really good. Even those high-end futuristic looking headphones that I asked for in the prompt. Let's see what SDXL came back with. It's actually not as bad as I expected, to be honest. The eyes and stuff still look realistic. It doesn't quite look like me though. It looks a little bit off, like it's some bizarro version. You can also see that the lenses are sort of missing in the middle of the glasses. Now let's create a couple more images. We'll go ahead and set number of images to generate to four for this one. We'll see if we can get back a different quality result, but man, I'm really happy with this one. This, you know, I could say is an actual photo of me. I'm gonna save this one. Let's go ahead and generate another. All right, and here's another one. Actually pretty good too. So if you've got the sunglasses, you've got the headphones. It picked up the gray hair on the side of my head, which I've got quite a bit of. And then it looks like this is actually in a Tesla, which is interesting. It has a perforated white seat. I had a Tesla Model X plaid and that was definitely in my training set. So it must've picked up on that. And then you can see it's got a little red cape on here. So I think it picked up on that for the Superman aspect of this. Let's see how SDXL did. And I don't know, it still doesn't quite look like me. Now it did a better job with the glasses, I think. And it followed the rest of the prompting. It actually, the adherence is better than I thought it would be. You even kind of get that Superman S on the chest here in this one at least. But there's something about the face that's just a little bit off. I would say this down in the bottom right, that's probably the closest. So we'll go ahead and save that one as well. I always like to jump into the community gallery, get a little bit of inspiration from other people's prompts. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this one. It's like an armored Superman superhero person. And this comes from Boomer. He's been making some amazing art. So be sure to check out his gallery when you visit the site. Now, this is a really detailed prompt. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this. And then we're gonna have to modify it just a little bit because we wanna make sure that we have our trigger word in there. So at the very beginning, we'll just make sure it has a photo portrait of B-Love. We'll click on generate, and then we'll do the exact same prompt over on the SDXL side. Now, the one thing that's gonna be an issue here is SDXL only listens to the first 77 tokens of a prompt. So this is gonna be way too long for SDXL. And man, Flux comes through again. It looks like me, it's got the same facial features and everything else, and I've got that badass armored suit on. I'm gonna click on save on this one too. And this is better than I thought out of SDXL. Not nearly the quality or the prompt adherence of Flux, but not too terribly bad. Again, the face just doesn't quite look the same. It doesn't quite look like me, but you've got these armored characters in the background. It looks like a Superman outfit on every single one of the images, but it doesn't have that same armored look. So it doesn't follow the prompt quite as well as Flux does, and I don't think you get that same level of realism, not even close. And once you're done having fun here and generating images, you can go over to My Images. This is all of the images that you've generated in the past, and you can sit here and you can make these public or private. So you can go ahead and toggle these all to be public. This adds them to the public gallery, which I'm gonna to link to down in the description. So you can check out some of these images yourself. You can also click on one of these images and you can see details about the prompt what model was used, the resolution, steps, and even the seed that was used to generate the image so that you can come back later and you can create something similar if you want to of yourself. Every subscriber gets their own public gallery too. So if you click on view gallery, it's gonna take you to Pixel Dojo AI user, Pixel Dojo, that's me. And you can see all of my images that I've generated using the system over the past few weeks. And if you click on any of those images, it pulls up a detailed view of it, along with some of those generation details that I showed you before. I hope you enjoyed that. I've been working so hard on Pixel Dojo day and night, and I hope it's something that you really enjoy. My idea here is to make this the ultimate generative AI playground, and I think we're well on our way. If you wanna check out this brand new Flux Laura trainer, just subscribe to Pixel Dojo. It's $25 a month. 
It includes unlimited AI art generations. Hope to see you over there. Thank you all so much. As always, I'm Brian.